Hey, good morning. This is Ryan Fernando and uh, going live with parentcircle.com. Uh, it's a wonderful Saturday. Um, I hope a lot of people are going to be joining me today, uh, watching this session. Um, I've done a lot of stuff uh, preparing for today's uh, workshop. Uh, in fact, I'm going to be standing today. So that's one thing uh, every parent out there, uh, if you want to live long, long enough to take care of your children really well, uh, is to actually have a standing desk. I just want to show you this, okay? So this is my office over here. And this is my standing desk. So I have my laptop down over here. And I actually stand because most of the day when I'm in nutrition counseling with uh, parents, with children, with sports athletes, um, I'm always sitting down. So I'm sitting down for sometimes about four to six hours a day in live counseling. Each counseling is about one hour long where we discuss nutrition. We take height, weight, body fat percentage and all of these things. Now, um, uh, for me, uh, research is showing with my team at Quantron. So uh, for those of you who are just joining in, who am I? I am Ryan Fernando. I am a nutrition coach. Um, people ask me, what's the difference between a nutritionist and a dietitian? Well, a dietitian is somebody who studies diet and can work in a hospital. For me, I studied in a medical college and then I did a certification in nutrition and I'm a nutritionist. So as a nutritionist, I can't practice inside a hospital. But I've also done my pediatric nutrition certification from the University of Manash in Australia. And I love children. So I personally have a five-year-old son and I'm a hands-on dad. I'm a hands-on nutritionist. And um, my kid was actually the youngest tested nutrition uh, genetic kid in the country. So what are the foods we need to feed him? What sort of fats to give him? His vitamin profile, his mineral profile. Is he gluten or lactose uh, aller allergic? You know, I actually have um, a sample copy actually here of his uh, report. And I don't know if this will come up on the thing, but, you know, we do stuff like gluten sensitivity and lactose sensitivity. And uh, that's what we do in a nutrition clinic for the kids. OK, so you look at things like phosphate, selenium, antioxidants. Uh, zinc is so important for children. My son falls sick a lot of the times. OK, and it's because his zinc and vitamin C levels are low. So his genetic receptor doesn't absorb. And for those of you who are out there, what are genes, human body? hardware. So if the human body is the hardware, okay, the genes are your software. So it's like if you have a calculator over here, this entire body is the hardware. A and the uh, the software inside the IC chip controls the, the genes. So we have about 23 to 25,000 genes. And what research is saying is that uh, we could actually figure out why my hair is long, Maybe why am I balding or not balding? Uh, why is my hair going white? Why do I have curly hair or no curly hair? So these are all of the things that I am going to be talking about today uh, in, in my seminar for one hour. I'm hoping people can hear me. Uh, if, you, if, you do, if you do have issues in the audio, please give us a comment. We have a technical team, brilliant technical team. They are watching this in the background at parentcircle.com. Guys, thank you for setting me up today. Um, it's wonderful to work with you guys. Uh, so let me get started, okay? So my first part of my seminar is nutrition, okay? We eat out of love and culture. So our mother, our father, and everybody, we, are, we eat out of love and culture. But what am I saying? I am saying bring in the science. Can you bring in the science? Because, listen, we are living in 2018. Life has changed. My father could not imagine when he was young that he would be able to talk to me on the internet and see a video. They didn't even have telephone lines those days. I mean, it was something that's wound up and all. And maybe my grandfather would have never even envisaged that, you know, you could do this. So I'm thinking 30, 40 years from now, what's nutrition going to be like? And nutrition is going to be like, you put your hand somewhere and say, hi, good morning, Mr. Fernando. Today, you cannot eat any bacon. So I mean, if you've seen that movie, that's what the future is going to be. And that's what we're doing now as pediatric nutritionists. What we're doing in our clinic, now I have about 60 dietitians on my team. My nutrition clinic is one of the largest in the country. It's called Koa Nutrition. And our team of dietitians and nutritionists interact with parents, find out what people are eating as per their love and culture, and then figuring out what they can do scientifically to improve the nutrition. It's never about a diet. We are all about diet, diet, diet. It's a very negative term. I think it's a stupid term. It should be short. Okay. So, so basically we do, we can't, you know, we can't go in that direction where we talk about a diet. So with children, 
Um, I, I've been practicing now for about 15 years. Qua Nutrition is about seven years old. And I can tell you, I'm one of the few people that ask for a blood test when there's no problem. Yes, I asked for a blood test for an eight-year-old kid who's swimming five hours a day. So parents say, hey, how, how can you ask for a blood test? In fact, both my in-laws are doctors, okay? And they're like, how can you ask for a blood test from an eight-year-old when there's no problem? Well, my point of view is that kids doing five hours a day, okay, there's something called as an RDA, recommended daily allowance, not money allowance, nutritional amounts. Now you need to understand this, okay? And most of you would know this. There's protein, there's carbohydrate, there's fat, there's vitamins, minerals, and there's water. And obviously, air. These are the seven components for life. So the three are the macro, protein, carbs, fats. An adult and a child has a certain daily recommendation. And none of us have any sort of technology that's helping us establish how much we need to eat in a day in terms of how much am I putting in my bowl and eating of carbs or protein or fat? We're going to get there. Mark my words. Next three years, there's going to be a camera on your plate, small dot that registers all your protein, carbs and fat. You heard it here first for me. I've actually seen the technology and it's mind boggling. So we're going to be able to determine how much of calories this kid needs. So let's say a kid is five years old to 15 year old and they go to school and you know, um, they're going to go off to school and like early morning, my kid goes off to school and I'm so worried because he doesn't want to eat in the morning. There's something known as the clock gene, C-L-O-C-K gene. Certain people are early morning and certain people are late night and their snacking behavior actually genetically from the last uh, pro probably 10, 20,000 years. So we think, you know, our ancestors, our ancestors, what do you mean by our ancestors? Two, three generations. That's not ancestral as per genetics. Ancestors, my 20, 20 dadimas back, 20 grandmothers back. That's about a thousand years. That's where the genetic manipulation has started to begin to change in our genes. So a lot of people can eat only after the sun comes out and much later in the day. So for children who go to school, breakfast time, can't eat it, it's okay. But what's important is, can we convince the school to allow them an early snack? Okay, so for my son, what I do is I have milk, but I fortify the milk with a scoop of protein. So I've actually designed my own protein supplement for my son. And later on, if you want it, you could find me as Ryan Fernando and ask me for the formula and I'll send it to you. So the point is I'm enhancing his protein and I'm giving him milk. But what we do is his first break is at around nine o'clock. So we pack a French toast or some piece of breakfast that has got all the protein, the carbs and the fat in it. So this is how you need to start planning. OK, so that first thing is about finding out the RDN. And as a parent, you can go up and Google up the height of my child, the weight of my child, the age of my child and figure out the recommended daily allowance. Do you know there's a daily allowance even for vitamin D? And I said I've done a lot of blood testing for children because all the children are doing sports. I am one of the leading sports nutritionists in the country and most of my clients are not the guys that win Olympic medals. Most of the guys are actually you, the parents out there who want your children to win that Kale Ratna award. So the point is, you don't win an award when you're 19 years of age. You start the hard work when you're 8 years of age. So these children are getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning, playing 5-6 hours a day, going to school, has to eat the 3 normal meals plus the sports meal. So they have to do all of this. And if your child's not doing any of this, well, you've got music class, you've got dance class, you've got every other class. Children are like zoned out today. And nutrition is like last century. So what are you doing about nutrition, okay? So I would say, do a blood test. And here's my logic, okay? If, if your child, and, and, and let me rephrase, okay, I've done about at least 6,000 children-based athletes over the last 20 years. In my history, I would tell you that there would be about, about 10 kids whose vitamin D was thumbs up, which is good. The rest, everybody has low vitamin D levels. Vitamin D, calcium in your bones, protein matrix, growing taller, height growth, obesity, all linked to vitamin D. And vitamin D comes only from sunshine and microscopic quantities in your eggs and mushrooms. You'd have to eat a wheelbarrow of mushrooms to get 1000 IU. So Indian RDS is 400 IU for children. I give my son 800 IU. And even after doing his blood test, his levels are still not at the normal pediatric levels. Go figure. 
So this is something that I'm arguing with. And unless the Indian Council of Medical Research, the Pediatric Association of India figures this out, that we are too diverse a population and we are too, got, too much got our heads in the sand, our children need to eat correctly. So today's session is about eating correctly. So since my, since my son, I, I've been feeding him when he's small. I've designed his food formulas and everything. And um, my wife was able to breastfeed only for the first, uh, first about 30 days. And I'm like... You know, you read up on breast breastfeeding and the techniques of it and how good it is and emotional IQ and uh, intelligent quotient happens when the child is breastfed at least till one year of age. I was like, how can I improve this? Because breast milk is not happening. And then formula feeds are today so sophisticated. You can figure it out. I used to personally make the formula feeds. And I remember this one... Um, I remember this one uh, pediatric session where the pediatric doctor says in the research that they did in Sweden, it took... 12 exposures. It took 12 exposures for a child to be adventurous on a food before the taste buds took over. But children have a defense mechanism, which is the genetics. So my son's genetic test says his bitter gene for preference for bitter foods is down. So, so basically, if I can just show this to you over here, okay, uh, it's part of my nutrition gene report that I do, okay. And uh, can you see that tendency to prefer uh, to prefer bitter foods? And before that, I have also tendency for tendency for uh, fatty foods and tendency for sweet foods. So, what happens is when I got this report for my kid, I figured out he has a sweet gene. I figured out that fatty foods he's okay; he doesn't like it that much. But bitter foods was negative; it was red. So what we what we figured out is I had to now when we are weaning him at the month eight, nine years of age, we are going to be go getting into uh, that zone where I have to start putting in his baby food formula, things like broccoli and cucumber and, and green vegetables, a little bit of capsicum. I remember when I used to put when I used to put capsicum when he was about one and a half year old, he like to, 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 keep spitting it out. So what I'm saying to you is it's 12 exposure. And even if you have a teenager, it's 12 exposures. And if you can't get them in 12 exposures, it's because you and I both don't have patience as parents. And let's figure it out. When we have, when we don't have patience, what do we do? We take our mobile phones. The mobile phones, you know. I, I'm walking in, in, in Delhi airport yesterday and I see this family feeding this kid. And they're like going like that. And there's a phone over there. Do not make this mistake for babies. Do not make this mistake for 5 to 10 years old. Do not make this mistake for teenagers who are young and teenagers who are getting to adult stage. Because when they are distracted, they do not know what they are eating. So it leads to eating the wrong food. And then you're relying on the senses of physical taste bud pleasure rather than the satiety feeling from the stomach. So parents, a lot of children don't listen to their own Parents, like my parents never listen to me. Okay. They listen to my head dietitian. My point I'm trying to make to you is this. Work with a nutritionist. Uncle Ryan will work with your kids. And when Uncle Ryan works with the kids and your kids who is a, the, the, with Uncle Ryan is a teacher, your children tend to listen more. So, uh, you know, how children listen to teachers, how children listen to coaches. Nutrition, you feel you're the expert, but your child doesn't listen to you. So you got to go with that exposure. Okay. The next thing that I want to point out, and I'm getting a lot of uh, uh, a lot of questions over here, a lot of questions. I'm going to do a uh, half an hour later and scroll through each question I'm getting. Like I've got Satya Priya. Hey, hi, Satya Priya. How are you doing? Uh, my daughter eats a little and picky, but feels hungry often. How can we give a completely neutral feeling, which is uh, which is filling? She's in her preteen. So I'm going to come back and answer this. But I just want to walk you through. Because as parents, you need to understand this. Okay, You really need to understand how we think as nutritionists. And how you can take small tips today. But I first want to go to this one. Okay, Food. Food can be a builder. And food can be a trigger. So what I mean by this is that. When I'm doing food is a builder. Food builds us. RDA, recommended diet. I need protein. I need carb. I need fat. And that grows me. I need to know how many calories of that protein, carb, and fat I need to give. If I give too much, I become fatty bumbulati. If I become too little, I become leaner. I become skinnier. If I give too much of deficiency, children fall sick. So you got to figure this out with your nutritionist. you got to figure it out. And a lot of us are winging it. But my point over here is, have you ever figured out the trigger? Like I have this constant argument in my house. My son loves curd 
And I believe, because I've done my food allergy test and my genetic test, I'm lactose intolerant or milk allergy. Whenever he has that, in the night, kind of sometimes I get up and I go and I check up on him and all, and he's breathing through his nose and go, and the day he doesn't eat curd, that doesn't happen, which means phlegm production of mucus is more. So for him, trigger is an issue. So in your child, you might find out that banana is a trigger, maybe beetroot is a trigger, maybe non-veg is a trigger, maybe eggs is a trigger. And what you think as a parent, oh, egg is very good for the body, so let us give egg. Listen, every person is bio-individual. In your own family, go back to your brother and sister as a pair, as a, as a when you were children. And both of you like different foods. And even till today, both of you look different. Heart rates are different. Blood pressure is different. You may be from the same genetic background. But between siblings, there's a difference. So even your children, just because you come from a Marwadi background, just because you come from a Bengali background, need not mean that your child likes that food because your generation just two dadi maas ago migrated to that part of the world. Think about that. Food is a builder and food is a trigger. So we're not focusing on the trigger, not recognizing the symptoms, okay? So this is something that, that is really, really required, okay? And so to get to the next level, and you know, there's tons of information in Google. What type of food to give my child? He's preteen. Google it up, you'll get it. What I'm trying to get across to you is the concepts. If as a parent, you understand the concept, because if I tell you, give your child chana, and for you, if, you're, if your child chana is a trigger, guess what? I'm killing your child with food allergy. So there's no one food recommended by any expert that's the best for your child. You have to figure out what it is. And normally what I do is when there is a grief circumstance, like we have three years, four-year-old children coming to us and they can't drink milk. And parents say, Are yaar, the bacha hai yaar, ne pee sakte, kya de, kya de do? Milk is not the end of the world if you don't give it to people. So... I would suggest if there are serious allergies, phlegm production, child vomits, child has bloating, child is obese, uh, you know, um, child is very, very lethargic, gets up in the morning and takes three hours to literally bound out of bed. Children should have energy. Something is wrong. You may want to do a food allergy test. And these are expensive, but they're once in a lifetime. And we can figure out what are the triggers, okay? I know people will say, yeah, but you know, in our time, we didn't do all of these tests and all, and we were all normal and everything. Well, your parents had a cricket team, right? They had 12 people to, uh, to, to basically have the experimentation with. And we today are having just one, two, two children is maximum. I'm not even thinking of two kids. I'm thinking of one kid. What about you? Do, do you think you, you want to have more than two kids? If you have three kids, wow, you're super brave in today's day. But how do we feed these children, okay? So, uh, for example, when you do the food allergy, let me give you my example. You've heard of almonds? Well, this is my son and this is me. We are allergic to almonds. But guess what? Almonds are basically high in vitamin E, a good carbohydrate source, a great one. And every dadi ma has soaked five almonds in the morning and given it to the child. Smile if you really have experiences that your dadi ma and your mother has given you almonds. Okay, and if your wife is sitting next to you and your wife is giving you almonds and your children almonds, please give her a kiss on the cheek right now. This is so important. But what if almonds, I'm here to be the devil's advocate as a child pediatric expert. If you do not know whether the food is bio-individually bio compatible to you, then you're actually putting something that is slapping up your body, your immune system and everything. Okay, so, so basically... Um, what I want to do right now is I want to get into one topic which I think will change everyone's life. There are a lot of questions coming in, millets, dosa, soya, and I'm going to do all of that, and that's available on the internet. But I want to do this, okay? I want to bring about an awareness, a sugar demo. So I do this with the children uh, who come into my clinic, and you know, there are there's a lot of stuff out there in the market, and children love to buy, you know, these tetra packs of juice. I'm sure his parents, even I buy it for my son. And like I remember the first time he went to school about uh, this June, okay. So I was like, Papa, I want juice. I want juice? Papa, I want the juice where Icon is on. So my son's name is Icon. I want where Icon is in the pack. So that's Icon on the pack. So he wants only this because of this picture. So we buy this juice. And uh, basically, I want to show something to you, okay? So this is, a, this is a 200 ml pack. If you can see, this is a 200 ml pack. And there's something I want to show you over here, okay? If you can see the added sugar. So there are two types of sugars, okay? 
one sugar one sugar is that of the fruit which is the fructose and one sugar is the added sugar so this added sugar basically is your table sugar okay so that's your, that's your table sugar now you you saw that you want me to show it to you it's again i'm going to show it to you can you see that 6.5 grams per can you see that here 100 ml this is what i want you to do i want you to understand that whenever you're buying a pack get your children to learn this look at it how much is that so if i give this to my son he's getting 13 grams of sugar one teaspoon is 5 grams so that's about two and a half teaspoons of sugar in this plus the sugar plus the sugar inside that from the fruit okay so when you're buying try and find the juice that has no added sugar again i'm all for a full fruit but you know what we live in 2018 and we want beverages i want to go forward this is what all children are there parents if your children are watching this right now call them right now to the to the to the tv or to the phone or wherever it is call them uncle ryan saying hi hi hey this is ryan over here you know what this is okay this is aerated beverages all of us love this a kid would digest this a teenager would digest this in one session this is 750 ml okay and we worked out that 100 ml has um it was about 10.9 grams of sugar this bottle 750 ml bottle contains 17 teaspoons of sugar 17 one seven so it's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 18 18 teaspoons of sugar what the f are we doing this is where the problem comes to the next generation having diabetes and hypertension and it's our parents mistake i blame my mom i blame my dad they allowed me to have this they didn't have the knowledge and i'm super happy that you're watching my session today i'll be super happy if you could please share this because when you share a session we generate awareness so many children that come to my clinic do not have aerated beverages my son does not have aerated beverages but he'll have a juice so look at the difference i have a little sugar i got to move with the times but he knows that there's too much sugar in this i've taught him that i want to do one more food demo okay um and everyone knows this if i come to your house you're going to serve me a lassi i have milk allergy lassi okay lassi lassi let's do this together we'll do this together okay i hope it becomes clear and yeah there it's clear can you look at the added sugar per 100 ml added sugar per 100 ml so basically i'm getting 12 grams of sugar per 100 ml so if i come to your house you give me a glass of lassi so it means it's about 25 grams of sugar 5 teaspoons of sugar so imagine i came to your house and i got a glass of lassi and you put 1 2 3 4 5 how ridiculous is that and this stuff tastes really 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 good because of the amount of sugar and i want you to start doing this for every product that you buy like if i'm in a supermarket i'm looking at each label i'm looking at a biscuit packet label i'm looking at a chocolate label i'm looking at processed food labels because i'm not looking for any with relationship to preservatives or 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 or, or, or uh, preservatives or what is the other word uh, additives or food flavors i'm looking first for sugar sugar is the bigger gunda than anything else so keep this in mind okay and um let's go forward now the million dollar question <clears throat> you know i worked with sushil kumar and um, he's a vegetarian shubankar sharma one of the best golfers in india right now he's a vegetarian i'm a non vegetarian but i've moved into not having non veg on every meal in the day and lessening it there is a lot of research that says that vegetarian people will be healthier healthier but there's also research says that vegetarian people have greater incident of heart disease because the type of food we are eating in this part of the world is too much of dairy because when you're a vegetarian paneer or milk or curd 
and that has an ability to somehow move your cholesterol in a certain range. I know a lot of you would say to me that, you know what, cholesterol production is 70% from the liver and 30% from the, uh, from the food sources. But guess what? The way we eat between the ages of 1 and 20 is how we program for the rest of the life. Like, for example, I am lactose intolerant. I can't have milk. If I have milk, I get huge phlegm production mucus the next day. I love a cup of milk tea. I can't have black tea, but every day I have my black tea. The black tea, the black. Tea. So my point is, I've been conditioned from a young age to like milk tea. So what if you, as a parent, can figure out what is the trigger for your kid and accordingly, uh, accordingly go forward on that? Okay. So um, this, this was, this was a little bit of what I wanted to talk about today is in terms of taking care of our children and the 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 food the food demo on the sugar part. Okay, I'm going to go to five quick tips that I'm going to give you. Okay, and then I'm going to start answering all the questions. My first tip, okay. Sorry, I I, I, I deviated. I forgot to talk about this. A non-veg is still giving a child better protein source. So parents, if you're thinking of moving onto the line of eggs and your child is not allergic to eggs, I'd give you a thumbs up. If you're a vegetarian, uh, for boy child, if you're planning to give more amount of soya in the, in the week, soy protein or soy chunks or soya bean, then I'd advise you to do the fermented soya because it contains uh, the removal of phytic acid and a little bit of the phytoestrogens, which kind of impact the testosterone and affect male development to a certain st st stage. So in my male kid athletes, I try not to give soya. I try and get a green pea protein, brown rice protein. So I look at a supplement because uh, these children require 1.5 grams. So one and a half times. So if I, at 75 kgs, require 75 grams of protein, a child at 75 grams requires 1 into, uh, 75 into 1.5. So nearly 110 grams of protein. So children, because they're growing, require double the quantity, not double, but 50% more quantity of protein than adults. So in the vegetarian, non-vegetarian segment, I need kids to understand the importance of beans, legumes. And in fact, research is now showing that beans, legumes and all can actually lower cholesterol. So for the older ones that are watching this, but for those of you who want their children to eat more protein, well, you have to come up with innovative ideas and concepts where more beans, more legumes, quinoa, can be added to your nutrition plan, okay? So, um, veg people, um, one problem is the vitamin B12 deficiency because B12 as a vitamin comes only from non-veg food. So, again, I have children who are 12 years old playing tennis 4 hours a day, 15 hours a day, pure non-veg Jain clients. I have pure non, uh, sorry, pure vegetarian Jain clients. Uh, there was a blooper, sorry, sorry about that. But uh, we have people of pure vegetarian and then the children are like, I'm lethargic, I can't go to blood. And they're like, boom, take a blood sample. Of course, the kids cry, okay, when they take the blood sample. So we've got to prepare them for that and all. But when I get that blood sample, I'm like, boom, wow, B12 is low. So that's something. With regards to non-veg, you know, children don't have a cholesterol problem, but we're getting a lot of children who eat so much of non-veg that the cholesterol levels are high. So again, Adult behavior training would be to teach your children how to nutritionally eat correctly. Portion control, type of food, whether veg or non-veg, give them an exposure. And, you know, I do something called as a, as a food diary. Uh, and uh, my phone's not over here. But um, if you could just get my phone, please. And what I would do is I would uh, show you a food diary on how we ask people to get us um, photographs of what they are doing on a daily basis. So this will work for you as a parent, okay? If you can track what you're feeding your child for the whole week, okay? Uh, it's going to absolutely help you out in terms of determining whether you're feeding your child enough of antioxidants from green leafy vegetables, from pulses, from lovely fruits. So I'm just going to show you my phone over here. And uh, I just want to show you one of my food diaries and i'm just going to go randomly into my phone okay so i'm just right in front of you okay these are this is my thing and i've got i've got this lovely guy here he's a tennis player 14 year old and check this out so he's been with me and watch this can you see this this is his food diary that he shares with me now what i'm doing with this teenager is i'm getting this teenager to report in on what they're eating every day see i just stopped randomly and you can see i've got vegetables in that 
and a person who's not aware it's just brown and white it's just rice sambar dal in sabzi they're like uh, i don't know uh. so we got to figure this out for our children to train them correctly okay so my first my first tip that's going to come up but in my tip ko yeah my first tip for everybody who's a child who wants to grow taller beetroot kuchandar beetroot sambar beetroot halwa beetroot juice parents we are very lazy okay very lazy beetroot juice give the kid have you tasted beetroot juice you feel like puking make a beetroot halwa so i have this concept okay um for children you have three c's first you convince them come to uncle ryan i uncle ryan will play this video he'll tell you beetroot is very good for you beetroot does vasodilation beetroot will increase your height uh, beetroot uh, in girls will uh, help in the detoxing of the liver which protects against pcod condition polycystic by the way pcod is a huge problem with uh, girl children today because we are eating very wrong i'll come to that but beetroot my best friend halwa best friend best dish to make it parents one medium size beetroot if you're making a juice make it in nimbu pani it blunts the blunts the taste but this is the perfect thing that you can make okay uh the second tip that i have go organic 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 i have only one question does the farmer is the farmer worried about you and me in terms of how much of chemical insecticide and pesticide they're spraying on the crop there is no consumer protectionism in this country everyone's protecting the farmer fine it's okay they don't have government should give them subsidy i believe in all of that but where are we being protected do we know how much of insecticide and pesticide they put in what are we doing about that so we're getting all the shit into our food forgive my language i get very very emotional about this because we are billion lab rats and nobody's worried about all the chemicals coming to us so nobody's going to be worried you be worried about yourself go organic you want to give your kids milk you're giving more milk every day 1 liter of milk get organic milk oh ryan how do we know it's organic fuck lame excuse first you do your job of getting organic then figure out whether by going to that farm whether the milk is organic or not but organic rice organic dal organic whatever you can do start going organic i have fights in my house because when we cannot get it they go and buy it from the local store so the point is that chemical is going into us and that's what's actually my issue you know your junk food at least you know you're getting that amount of sugar you know you're getting 17 teaspoons of sugar but do you know how much of chemical is going to our body and that's the reason there's an incidence of cancer children are becoming obese girls are getting polycystic ovary so fast go organic is my next tip okay i have a lot of questions they're just coming in i'm keeping the question i can't do two at the same time do not microwave your food it zaps the food it zaps the oil in the food do not microwave it creates something for xenoestrogens all of you who have daughters girls grow before their puberty before their menstrual cycle before that they grow they get a height spot girls today are getting their menstrual cycles earlier than their mothers their grandmothers and their great grandmothers the reason being is the xenoestrogens which are coming from the milk because the cows are being injected the eggs because the eggs are being the hens are being injected coming in because of we microwaving our food because the oil gets blasted and it behaves like a xeno xeno means a foreign estrogen so it goes into your daughter's body and says oh hello i'm estrogen time for your ovaries to start preparing and we then have so many plastics which again behave like poisonous estrogens so you know you microwave your food and the bpa and everything goes in so that's one thing throw the microwave out right now you know mothers if you are having an argument at home take the microwave and break it and say ryan fernando said to break it use the tawa use the oven let's go back to our grandmothers days okay what the favorite food green peas green peas green peas green peas i have this concept for children three c's convince so try and educate them third second camouflage um pav bhaji put the green peas in smash it up put it in there you have a paratha smash it up put it in there and the third one is outright corn your kids don't tell them what's in it corn them put it in nutrition has to be convincing or conning them that's it because you are worried about their health you are worried about their performance you are worried about their brain performance that's what we need to do
if you're doing soya bean for those who are vegetarian do tempeh or do tofu which is the fermented form okay um i believe in milk i do believe a lot in milk but um if you have the, as i showed you earlier and those of you just joining my session as i showed you earlier if you have the lactose uh, sensory so in this case the lactose is green so this kid can have lactose but uh, a kid can't have gluten and i'm getting a lot of children who are gluten intolerant in india in india and um, once you're figuring this out i'm able to feed them right and we're getting a growth spurt in their teenage years because when you have gluten it's like a poison and doesn't accept the absorption of the vitamins and minerals very very easily okay so uh, first part of my presentation is done i'm going to now head into the questions and i've got like Whoa! Huge number of questions. So let me start off. Okay, blah blah blah. Uh, my five-year-old son always likes eating potato fry and curd rice. He never like eating any other po than potato fry. How can I make him eat other vegetables? As I said, camouflage or con him. So when you make the potato fry, make the potato uh, cutlet and put a lot of things in and make it like a log or make it like a brick. and then make it like a play thing because my 5 year old son doesn't like fish so what we do is we buy the fish we boil it then we mix it with potato and vegetables and i actually have bought these molds from amazon which punch out bricks like lego bricks so we put that in we kind of shallow fry it yes i said shallow fry i'm talking about healthy cooking at home with the proper oil by the way my son cannot have olive oil because his gene receptor says you can't have olive oil so for example we do this test called the mufa mona and saturated fat intake now if you have the mufa red in your gene it means basically uh, you know you have this thing oh olive oil is very good and all and you fry shallow fry in your olive oil pa not good in fact my son has saturated which is ghee so we work with a limited amount of ghee so for your son you can incorporate vegetables one by going to a nutritionist and a third party telling him you become stronger fitter uh, you know all of those things much better if they um, eat all of those vegetables and basically what i do is you know parents you go kaddu loki butter god uh, karela i usually slap right now for me if you are feeding karela to your kids what's wrong with you why would you want to feed karela ask your kid do you like broccoli do you like cauliflower do you like put uh, do you like tomato do you like carrot do you like capsicum ask the basic stuff put that in make a puree of it make a vegetable soup biryani mash it up put it put it in your gravy of the of the the tomato gravy of your dish you can hide it over there and curd rice is absolutely fine and that's the way i would get it if you can't get vegetables get berries some dry fruits because i have very high antioxidant okay um my daughter wants to be taller like her friends without putting on weight a natural preteen fear of weight gain parents if you have teens this is a huge problem i'm facing okay huge problem the girls today are being body shamed so they have this image problem and you don't even know this i have kids coming in over here and the parents think they're eating correctly and the kids are going back home sticking their finger down their throat and puking out their food because they want to be slim trim and then we have hair fall and we have bad acne and we have all of these issues and skinny kids we even have fat kids doing it and just because of the body image problem so um i think you need to understand and spend time with your kids to really figure out if they are having eating behavior disorders from the other end of the spectrum you want to grow tall i always tell children you have to eat to lose weight you have to eat to gain height because if you don't eat it's like do you want to build a new skyscraper oh yes i want to build a tall building but i don't want to invest in any raw material investment i don't want to put any bricks i don't want to put any concrete so i give that example to children and then they think about it and i say you need to learn to eat scientifically to put on height but not fat so that's that's how i would answer that question my daughter is 16 year old plays basketball and i'm worried as she's that she's not eating enough all the physical work ma'am if your daughter plays 16 year old and plays basketball she will be burning at least 1000 calories uh, in her training if not more and i am 100% sure i'm betting my last 10 years of experience she is having a deficit of calories deficit of protein in her diet the right thing to do is to get her to a nutritionist come to qua nutrition 
figure it out if your daughter is playing basketball uh, i'm sure you're paying uh, fees for her coaching and all of the stuff you haven't paid fees for how to eat correctly the simplest thing that you can do is get this analyzed now i can give general advice like put in sweet potato on the diet have maybe 10 to 15 grams of protein post workout maybe a chocolate milkshake with uh, a banana but you know when i say chocolate milkshake banana your daughter may be allergic to both of those and and then you say oh the ryan expert was a stupid fellow he gives advice nutrition is bio individual it needs to be customized the principle you need to understand is how can i get smaller meals more frequently pre basketball she needs to eat something one hour before during basketball handful of nuts and lot of hydration post basketball don't wait let's say she finishes 6 o'clock in the evening don't wait till 9 o'clock for her to come home and eat at 7 o'clock should be a dinner as quickly as possible there's just a 3 hour window after playing sports where you get in okay Uh, I have a question. Is it okay to give my five-year-old son uh, millet, soya, dosa, etc.? Will he be able to digest in that age? Um, um, so, uh, um, Vishi has asked this question. What I would say is that uh, uh, you know, um, uh, always I start my son on a new food. Like recently, what was it that I gave him recently? I think I gave him quinoa recently. So I started with one teaspoon. Day one. Day two. Two teaspoons. Day three, three teaspoons. And then I understood no potty difference, no extra gas. He didn't complain of pain. He didn't, he didn't spit it out and all. And I realized that's good. So look at your kid's potty. By the way, below before the age of ten, ask your children not to bless the flush. I'm constantly looking at what stool samples are left by my son inside because I know he's digested. I know when he's constipated. I know when the stool is. I mean, I'm going to sound gross over here, but it's really like a big log and it's hard. I know he's eaten a lot of food but no water, so we can look at that. So, uh Vishy, based on your 5-year-old son, you can give all the foods provided they digested, but if you see symptoms and signs of distress in the potty, in the skin, in the mucus production, frequently falling ill, papa my stomach is paining and all of that stuff, these are signs that you need to say ah uh, go back and look at your food diary like i showed you the food diary right so when you look at your food diary that's really going to help you <sighs> how to deal with acute acidity in adults working parents i thought this was a kid session but anyway i have a lot of adults coming to me with acidity one thing that i've been doing of late is um, i use probiotics acidophilus lactobacillus acidophilus is one guy that helps realign the gut second is alkaline water so you can buy like a kent ro jug which is available in the market and it produces alkaline water and then twice or thrice a day you in your office you have your alkaline water that's going to really help acidity has huge functions related to b12 and a lot of things we need to look at a blood test uh, how does it happen general advice Uh, is increase your protein uh, with more amount of water coconut water that should help you but again you don't want a bandaid you want a permanent solution and i think you haven't figured out uh, mr gargi how to handle this because you're eating the wrong food all your life maybe even coffee is causing your acidity get a gene test done get a blood test done get a food allergy test done and know for the rest of your life how you should eat correctly there's got one the now is it wrong if a 2 year old child passes stool to 3 to 4 times a day uh not really vandana um uh, the first thing you have to understand is children have a small digestive system they're so tiny and they're so cute right now if they're going three or four times a day the only thing you need to ask is is it loose stools is the stool spelling really bad these are two signs for me as a pediatric nutritionist that i need to change what i'm feeding the kid is there a lactose allergy is there a milk allergy because sometimes if there's a milk allergy children tend to pass stool more frequently like semi solid or diarrhea type Now, if there's nothing of this problem, I don't think it should be a problem. By the time the child's four or five, it will come down to two times a day, and then once there's about six or seven, it should come down to once a day. Uh, look for spots on your child's skin, like you know, red rashes and all of that stuff. Look at if the child's constipated before going this two, two, three times a day, and the, the, that's griping. These would be uh, warning symbols and signs for you. It may be that you're a very good mother and giving the kid a lot of fiber, so maybe what you want to tone back on the fiber. So look at that, but. If you feel it's a pro- problem then get in touch with us at Core Nutrition or contact us my name is Ryan Fernando figure out we get a lot of children with uh, with gluten sensitivity lactose sensitivity we get children i had this kid who was allergic to beetroot i like big shot hey beetroot very good height growth kid was allergic to beetroot so figure it <clears throat> i was talking about almonds what's the difference between california almonds and other almonds available in the market 
uh, most almonds, the oil is extracted from them. And so when you break the shell, you have the almond and then they extract the oil and then they sell that almond. So you're, you're devoid of the good mufas from almonds, which is the more unsaturated fats. Uh, I would just buy organic almonds. California almonds are from California. You have almonds from the, 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 from the valley over here in India, which is from Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh. Um, I buy an almond, which is the Marmara almond. It's supposed to be the better one, but I have no affiliation to any of these almond companies. Uh, I'm allergic to almonds, unfortunately, so I don't eat almonds. But when I do give them to my wife, I buy the better quality organic almonds. Um, Jamila. Jamila says, I am 43 years old, 5'9 tall, 36 inches waist. I want to reduce it. I go to the gym every day doing exercise. Really blah, blah, blah. Jamila, this is a kid session, but I love you. Come to Quan Nutrition. Find us in Quan Nutrition. Call up Quan Nutrition. We work with a lot of people in terms of getting their health into check and when you're working out we've had people work out for 10 years and not lose weight just because they have nutritional deficiencies like for example jamil i can just tell you i pop up this i do your gene tests and i know that you have vitamin b6 b12 and uh, your vitamin c if any of these are low i can immediately relate it to uh, your weight loss and uh, you know we do the sports gene also and i just want to show something to you there is a gene that's called weight loss or weight, weight exercise gain with exercise. So there's a certain gene in your body for certain people. If they work out, they'll not lose weight, no matter how much they work out. And some people, when they work out, they actually gain weight. I've had clients like that. So I have to put them on walking and the trainers hate me because I've just told them, go walk. So our body is driven genetically. So just because the whole world is walking out and doing Zumba and Boomba and they're losing weight and, you know, go figure. Everything is bio-individual today. Um, Priya is asking me, been, been falling? P, uh, blah, blah. Nutrition month is very good. Informative. Oh, thank you. That's a nice praise. Uh, is it okay? Gargi is asking, is it okay to have pulses every day? It is absolutely okay to have pulses every day. Change them around. Mix your pulses, especially your children. By the way, for every 10 pulses, every individual will have an allergy or produce more gas or fart more with three or four pulses. Figure out which one works best for you. Okay. Uh, my dad, my daughter just come out of a stomach flu inve infection. What can I give? Cucumber for, for stomach infection. Coconut water works really, really good to calm the gut. Um, live curd, fermented curd. Your dosa batter, which is fermented, made at home, uh, has got good bacteria, which can really help your daughters uh, get the good bacteria back in her stomach. Check with your pediatric doctor if you can give her a probiotic. Probiotic would be lactobacillus ramonosus, lactobacillus plantarius, lactobacillus acidophilus, and bifidobacter. So bifidobacter and lactobacillus are two guys that work in healing the stomach infection. Don't give too much of sugar-based foods after a, a, a recent stomach flu infection. And check your water filters. And uh, to boost immunity, you can look with a blood test is vitamin D low. So everyone knows vitamin C and immunity, but research is actually shown in Japan where they found by giving children more vitamin D, the incidences of flu and uh, influenza in the school dropped by 50%. So there was a direct statistical correlation to vitamin D supplementation and improved immunity. So what I mean by immunity, if your immunity goes up, 90% of your immunity comes from your gut. So if a child's falling sick at the gut, it means that the nutritional deficiency is not able to support that immune coming out of the, out of the gut, you know. So keep that in mind. Uh, wow, there are so many questions. Uh, my daughter's in 12th standard. What can I give her to get more focus on her studies? Okay, listen, I've helped children ace their 10th standard and their 12th standard. This is what you need to do. Brahmi, Shankar, Pushvi, uh, Ashwagandha. This is not me. This is ancient Ayurveda. Brahmi, Shankar, Pushvi, Ashwagandha. Find it out. Figure it out. I'm not going to give you the dosage because it's based on weight. And you need to see, uh, you see, need to see a nutritionist. But keeping the herbs aside, research has shown DHA, which is an omega-3 mostly found in fish oil helps improve the brain memory blueberries blueberries a cup of blueberries improve memory by 30 to 70 percent in old age people if it can do it in old age people it can do it in your daughter also okay so uh, that's what you can do there are a few four five other secrets that i do with my children i ain't giving it life i'm sorry but those are like 
secrets that I keep to get kids much, much sharper and fitter. And so comfort and nutrition guidance, that's how we earn our bread and butter at the end of the day. Um, how important it is for parents to understand food labels? I just did the demo and for those of you just joining me right now, if you remember, I did the food demo label and uh, you know, remember this one, we, 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 did, we did the amount of sugar in it and the amount of sugar uh, is basically 25 grams of sugar in 200 ml. That's a glass of lassi. So that's about five teaspoons of sugar. So do all of that in terms of label, okay? Um, I came across many parents who think refined flour is healthy because of the word refined till I actually tell them it's maida. Yeah, it's basically you have to look at whole grain flour. Whole grain ka matlab, it's the, it's the whole thing. You have what is known as, so the grain is there. Inside there's something called endosperm. Then there is something called the husk. Okay. So what uh, manufacturers do is they take off the husk and that inside thing, they, they refine it. So that's the pure flour and you're losing out all the fiber, which also contains the vitamins and the minerals. So that's something that you'll have to, you'll have to look, uh, uh, look at. Okay. So um, final few questions that are there. Um, my, my kid is seven years old. She has the same weight and height since the last half year. Uh, this is okay. Um, but one person has asked this. What I would say is there's something known as the growth curve the pediatric growth curve, where we check the weight and the height of the child and we plot it on a curve and we look at the percentile. Is the child below the percentile of growth or above? I personally believe that nutrition plays a key, key role. And if you join me at the beginning of the center, this, this session will be live, it would be available offline later. Go back to the beginning where I talked about vitamin D. Vitamin D in every player that has come to me in the last 15 years has been vitamin D deficient. And you and I both know vitamin D bones vitamin D height structure. So if vitamin D is low in our children, then obviously they're not getting it from the diet because it comes only in mushrooms and eggs. And our children need to eat like about 20 eggs a day and half a wheelbarrow of mushrooms. And that's, that's not possible. So we need to give them a supplement. We need to look at calcium. We need to look at protein. You know, sometimes I evaluate children and they're only getting 50% of the protein requirement in the day. So if your child is seven years old and vegetarian, you may have an issue over there also. My daughter has an IBS problem, any specific nutrition. I, uh, this is from Ms. Banerjee. Ms. Banerjee, please, I hope you're consulting a good doctor and a good uh, nutritionist. Because when a child has an irritable bowel syndrome, it means some food is a trigger. Some food is a trigger. Where is that? Where's my thing? Just one second. I just... This is what I want to come back to. In your child, some food is triggering and you're asking me for a builder. So unless you remove the triggers and stop them in the diet, you're never going to heal the IBS. So figure out the trigger. I would tell you do a gene test. I would tell you do a food allergy test because you will save your child years of pain, years of medicine, years of not growing and just, you know, it's just about 30 to 50,000 rupees to discover that for comfort for the rest of your life. Like I discovered I'm gluten intolerant when I was 34 and nobody told me that going to the toilet four or five times a day was a problem. My mom's like, you never told us you went to the toilet four or five times a day. I'm like, how could I tell you that? I just thought it was normal. But I didn't know I had an IBS. So you got to remove the triggers. So ever since I've stopped my gluten and my lactose after doing the DNA test, I figured out life is so much better. So if you have a small kid, please, please, please get in touch with us at Core Nutrition. Spend a little money, do it. But IBS is the worst thing that children go through. You know, they're in school. They can't go to the toilet. You know how miserable they would be in the gut, how much pain they're going through. I, I would just say uh, zinc is there to heal the gut. Uh, uh, glutamine is there to heal the gut. But don't do any of, the, any of this until you remove the triggers, okay? Uh, is it okay to cook coconut oil? It is okay to cook coconut oil. It is okay to consume coconut oil. I'm working on the premise of bioindividuality. If your gene is there, like my gene personally, when I've tested it, I cannot, I shouldn't have married an Italian because it doesn't accept MUFA. And so my gene says saturated fat. So does my son, saturated fat. But my wife's is actually MUFA thumbs up. So in my, in my in her kitchen, we actually have a bottle with a picture of a lady on it and the bottle of oil with a men on it. So my servant knows if she's shallow frying the veg cutlet or the fish cutlet or whatever she's making. Uh, this is for Saab and son and this is for the mother. It's specific. So coconut oil is also specific to a lot of us based on our gene. 
you cannot individually identify it but they 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 have used coconut oil and they say saturated fat at high heats uh, smokes much later um i would say well, don't super deep fry things uh, shallow fry uh, so the oil temperature doesn't go very very high and if coconut oil taste wise and affinity wise works for you great for those of you are elder i have a simple test use one oil for a month do a blood test before that month do a blood test in the month for cholesterol profile if your cholesterol goes up simple logic yeah don't have that oil people are oh ryan there are so many oils which means i have to do five blood tests in a year rice bran oil coconut oil corn flour oil uh, sunflower oil safflower oil. if you don't have time to do that come to me i'll do your gene test okay my daughter six what should be her perfect diet this i mean how do you answer such a question i don't know the height i don't know the weight i don't know your culture i don't know whether you're vegetarian i don't know whether you're non vegetarian i don't know whether you eat eggs i don't know whether your child is allergic to anything how do you give generalized advice you can't but what you can do is there is a perfect diet when you start working with a nutritionist and it's not called a diet it's called a nutrition plan you come and you figure out what are the protein what are the carbs what are the fats i should feed my child how much should my child be eating let me educate the child on what portion why beetroot is good maybe one month work on beetroot next month work on another vegetable another month work on a protein and that's how we can educate our children going forward okay um there's a, a question from anusha which vegetable should we give to our, our kids our potatoes good for our children okay no food is bad and every food is a poison i repeat no food is bad and every food is a poison i can see your wheels turning right now yeah i'm just about saying the same thing we can't slap any food potatoes are good but if the child is extremely obese potatoes are high calorie how do we prepare them does it raise more calories or keeps the calories the same so potato is a calorie dense food so children who are playing children who are working out children who need energy better than potato is i love sweet potato because for centuries sweet potato has known to heal the gut get gift high growth those who want to build muscle sweet potato really helps build muscle so what i do is uh, i do sweet potato halwa for my kid so you can make a sweet potato halwa and that's a way to kind of cheat you get sweet potato chips can you give that return and uh, you can mash up the sweet potato and blend it up and use it as a thickening base for your soups that's where you could use sweet potato what are the other vegetables uh, anusha for your children or any children out there so i always negotiate with children and i say can you give me beetroot i don't like beetroot i like okay cucumber yeah yeah i can do cucumber carrot yeah yeah i can do carrot mm, tomatoes tomatoes make children grow taller yeah yeah i can do this so i put three vegetables in so tomato cucumber carrot put that in a salad put that in your cutlets what about onion no i don't like onions put onion in a curry camouflage corn broccoli did you know broccoli gives you good skin and hair i talk to the children and they're like yeah but i don't like the taste boom 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 camouflage it put it into the pav bhaji they'll eat the pav bhaji you don't tell them what is there in that don't tell them eat broccoli is good for your health doesn't work okay <clears throat> I think I've got all my sessions in about 57 minutes. This is Ryan Fernando. Um, I am on Instagram. Uh, it's Ryan underscore Nutrition Coach. I'm known as Ryan Nutrition Coach. I'm on radio every morning in Bangalore and Goa on Radio Indigo 91.9. That's where you can find me. I'm on Facebook. Please don't get to my personal profile page. It's maxed out at 5,000 people. Facebook doesn't allow me to add it. And they say, "Oh, you're a big shot. You don't want to add me and stuff like that." I'm gonna get thousands of messages a day. there's something called facebook page ryan fernando's page is there please like that page you can communicate with me on that page i've just written a book called eating secrets of champions uh, i don't have a copy over here it got released day before yesterday and it's printed in delhi you could go to my website which is ryanfernando.in uh ryan fernando dot in so if the moderators can help me out on this my website is ryan fernando dot in if you could type it up in the comment section of this of this youtube uh, live channel so in future people can find me at ryan fernando dot in uh, we much grateful to parent circle dot com uh and that's my book i've written all my learnings about sports nutrition and what what athletes should be eating and it it's written really really simple that even an 8 year old to a 10 year old can read it 
it's big font it's very very colorful it's a coffee table book it's available on my site please do go ahead and get it i've had thank you so much for ryan fernando dot in um, the moderator thank you so much for that i've had a wonderful session i got to thank ashwin today over here so ashwin over here say hi to everyone for helping me out and that's sort of over there for my team so sourav and ashwin have helped me manage the session today i've had a wonderful session with all of you uh, please stay tuned uh, my job is to change the way india eats that's what i'm here on this planet for i will help you to the best of your ability what you need to do for your child and for, what i need to do for my child is to give them the best strategic advantage in terms of the choice of the food that i'm going to put or i'm going to train him or her to put into their body so if you do this correctly it's better than iit ge class it's better than getting your children into stanford because for the rest of their life they learn how to eat for their body and that's the most important tool for the brain for the spiritual presence for the physiological aspect and remember the best the best image you can give your child is teaching them how to eat correctly my name is ryan fernando i've had a wonderful session today it's saturday i'm heading into another counseling right now it's going to be a gene plan delivery so uh, if you want to find us the number is 9743430000 that's my number i'm just going to type it up over here 9743430000 and if you call this number my team picks it up and uh, they can book an appointment with me in case you want to see me uh, we've got clinics across india delhi calcutta bangalore mumbai we're opening in hyderabad uh, bangalore we've got two clinics we're in chennai and i'm even in my home state goa god bless everyone this is ryan fernando i love you